Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. Mitch is behind the camera. Thank you. And we're still working on forks. Last week we made a unicrown fork. We basically got it finished and now we have to put on the on the U-brake bosses. I know it's all obsolete, but that's what's happening. So this is a fixture. This holds the cantilever bosses. And I used to have a fixture for the U-brake bosses, but I don't know what happened to it. Over 30 years or more, I guess it got lost. So we need to make something. I don't want to make one exactly like this. That's called copying. I want to do something a little different. Instead of all this alloy here, I want to use a couple rods. So the first thing we're going to do is to make this piece here and that's what holds the U-brake bosses. It will hold the U-brake bosses. This is obviously the wrong size so it's not interchangeable. So we're going to use this piece of metal here and I'm going to hacksaw off a couple pieces here to make some blocks. I made a real crude drawing yesterday but I know my dimensions. So the first stop is the hacksaw and then the milling machine. Let's go. Okay, got the face mill in there. It's got, it's got the carbide cutters. We're gonna take a skim off both of them. And that's it. Here's my big drawing. I took a piece of cardboard and I marked where the boss goes and the clamp goes. So that's gonna go like that. And the hole, we'll have two holes there. And then I wanna go 7 16 and that's 0.437. Okay. And that's my second hole. So this is going to be the, that's going to be the larger hole. I started making U-brake bosses, so I know that that's the size. So if we drill the hole and that fits in, we're good. And that's just about, oh, fall in. yeah, just about perfect, just falls in. I'm going to tap the holes next. So we have to cut a groove now. We have to cut a groove like this. See there's a groove there? And then this, this piece of flat bar is oh, that's a bit sloppy. So maybe we can make it a little better than that. Anyway, that's what the groove is for. So that this, this block can slide. So my cutter here is, it's 750. So we'll, we'll start with this one and then we'll switch to an end mill that has a sharper corner. But this one, it'll do most of the cutting. It's not quite, not quite the right size because the cutter has a, it's got a radius on it. But anyway, it's very close. Okay, so it's a little bit undersized. It's at 749. So if the cutter is indeed three quarters of an inch, it'll slide nicely. So this will be a, just a very light cut. There we go. So what we're looking for now, oh, look at that. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of play there, but we'll pretend it's not. That's, that's interesting how there's so much play there. Hmm. Everything is not always according to plan. So we just made, I just made the groove in here and this is the piece that goes in there. Can you see how it's, it's, it's got way too much slop? I don't like that. So what happened was I pulled out the end mill. End mills go in these things here. And I saw it says it's three quarters, except that's not the size. It's a 20 millimeter end mill, which is larger than three quarters. Why I bought this end mill, I have no idea. 
that is the size of the shank. That's, that's, that part is three quarters of an inch. So I looked around, we don't have an extra piece of metal like this, but I do have more of this. So what we're gonna do is to remake these because this comes off a long bar and we'll make this size so that it fits right in, right in there and doesn't have the slot. So now I know that I've got an oversized end mill. I did not know before. I'm just looking at, at the drawing I made yesterday and so we, we need a slot. And the slot, I have to figure out how far it is from the center line. And let's say it's 1.85 here. It's gonna be 1.85. And then the other side of the slot, the other end of the slot, is 2.5 so those are my numbers of 2.50 so I'm gonna I'll go back to the mill and I'll use the center drill and I'll put a hole on each side like that and then I'll use the quarter inch end mill and I will I will join those two holes and make a slot so now now we have two sets because I made a mistake I grabbed the wrong end mill so this is what happened do you see do you see that that's not acceptable. That's way too much slop. Check that out. There's a little bit of slop. You have to have a little bit of play. That's very good. So we're gonna make some handles now. Let me show you this one here. See these handles here? They're just half inch rod and they have a thread inside handle. Gonna make a couple handles. And then we're going to mount it on a fork. Let me show you the fork. It's a gator blade, which I made, I don't know, 87, 1987, 1988. It was a prototype. Actually, I can show you exactly. In the space of one week, I got both these forks given to me. And this is a prototype. You can see how, how the dropouts aren't the same and the crown is not the same. I'm, I made these manually machining. This is an, an extrusion, which got CNC machined. This is a prototype. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use a fork, this fork here. That's what it's gonna look like. There we go. So I'm gonna make the handles, and then after that, we'll put the dummy axle in there, and then we have to make this piece that goes here, and that's gonna be those two rods like I talked about earlier. And then we'll have a fixture for mounting U-brake bosses, and then we're going to mount U-brake bosses on the Unicrown. That's the Unicrown we're gonna work on. I'm gonna make some you break bosses and they're gonna get silver soldered onto this fork right here. Exciting, you breaks. Maybe they are coming back. I got half inch rod here, we're gonna make handles. And that's a bit of 3 16 that's gonna make the T there. So we'll set that up in the, in the drill press, in the mill. Got enough thread in there. And this stuff here is called press lube. We use that on the Aramaki swing arm. And we'll see what happens here. How about a brass hammer that I never use? I'm using a socket. How's that? 
this one's a little bit longer. That's by my eyeball. I think that's good. Let's go, let's go do the second one. Cool. So we're gonna grab some ready rod now. We're gonna put the ready rod into, into here, make it tight and cut it off and then the handle's gonna fit. What we're gonna do is to wind this down so it's tight, then we'll cut it off. So now we wind it down, make it tight. Okay. That fits nicely. I need to make one of these, so I'm gonna use this piece of quarter inch steel flat bar. Use the hacksaw, cut it off, then we'll go to the mill. I'll use an end mill. Half, that's gonna be a half inch end mill, and I'll take a few cuts down, and then make a little hole on the other side to locate this, this dowel. A little bit of TIG welding, and then that part will be done. Yeah, it's already, look at that, it's already melting. There you go. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Did a nice job. I think I'm gonna hold a vise and a vise. Kind of awkward working in a vise because it's hard to get around the back. So we'll let that cool down, and in the meantime, we're going to make the T handle here. I've got a quarter inch file. It's going to go like that. I've got a, a stainless steel rod. I think it's 304 or 316, something like that. I've got my, my little T handle held in a vise, so I'm going to I'm going to weld across, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. That's what it looks like, a little weld. Okay, five mil tap drill. This is anchor lube, it's a, a tapping compound that I like. Okay, we're bottomed out. So let's see where we are here. Cool down. So that's going to go here, like that. So what I need to do now is I have to get something that comes off here that's going to hold, hold this. If I take a spacer block, and then this is cold rolled half by half, and if I put that along like that, now, if I drill a hole right through the end there, that's a quarter inch hole, I can take a C-clamp and I can clamp this down and then I can rest this piece on top of that and then it's going to be squared this way and it's going to be squared that way as well because otherwise I don't know where I am. I can eyeball, but it's not very accurate. 
So this is going to slide like that. This is going to go on there. Got my spacer here. That's going to go like that. That's basically what we want. We're going to put a rod from here up to here like that. So I need to curve them to go down here. So I'm going to put some marks on here where the rods are going to go. So this is cold rolled steel. It's not super tough. It's only quarter inch. I'm lining up with that mark there because that shows where the bend will start. And I want about a 90, 90. So it's good to go a little bit more. And do you see how the bend here is sharper than here? So then I open it up a little bit here, like so. And it's not a, a, a perfect radius, but it's fine. That's, that's basically how it looks, like that. On the mitering of the fork crown, I made these two wooden wedges, and look. See how that sags down? When I put the wedges in there like that, that fixed it. So that's what's going to hold the, hold the jig. Okay, it's all welded. I guess the test is if, if we put it back on the fork and it still fits. We'll see. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, we have a fixture. Look at that. So what we need to do, we need to put this onto here. I'm going to make some new U-brake bosses. I've already made, I've got the posts done, so I know those are the right size. They have to be, have to be drilled, tapped. This may need to be made a little bit smaller. And then, then it has to be cut off, hollowed out, mitered, and then we put them on. Pretty simple. So this is what it looks like there. So we need some bosses. It's just mild steel the bosses are being made, made out of. You could make them out of 4130 or something like that, but they're just, it's not a high pressure item, so mild steel is fine. It's the quick tap system. Run the lathe, open the chuck when the tap goes in far enough, and then back it out. I think the hole saw is spinning pretty quick here, about 600 RPM. But it's just a really small hole saw, so it's fine. I actually mitered the bosses a couple of times because the first time was experimenting with the spacing and the second time got it right. 89 millimeter spacing and they fit really well. On the fixture you watch the spacing on either side of the little clamps. You want the spacing to be even and then you know the fixture is accurate. If it's to one side then it won't be as accurate. Eighty-nine millimeters. Adding some flux, got the torch going, and this is silver solder, so it flows quite nicely. Heats up a lot faster too, because you don't need such high heat. You want the cone to be nice and close when you're silver soldering, keeps the heat where you want it. 
on the comments on Instagram, some guy asked me who taught me how to braise. And I told him it was my high school teacher in grade eight shop class. Look, the jig just pops right off. That's a good fixture. That was the first time that fixture ever got used, right then and there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please come back again.